afternoon, Gold Diggers. Today we have the honor of being with Ms. Deborah Maxwell, who is the New Hanover County President of the NAACP. So we are honored to be able to interview her and ask her a few questions. So thank you for agreeing to this interview. Well, thank you for having me. Yes, ma'am. So the first question, if you don't mind me asking, is what's a little about your background? Well, I'm a native Wilmingtonian. During the day, I'm a public health social worker with children from birth to five. And at night, I'm the president of the NAACP <laughs> and district director for Blade and Brunswick, New Hanover, and Pender Counties. Okay. A busy job. It never ends, so it seems like. That's why we have sleep on our farm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as most of us do know, we know the NAACP has been around for a long time, but recently, the hashtag Black Lives Matter movement has kind of come to the picture. So what can you say is the difference between the two? Well, like you said, it's one is longevity, one is structure. Um, the NAACP was founded in 1909. We have unit bylaws and manuals and different procedural things we have to follow through. Black Lives Matter compliments us because they don't have to go through all those guidelines and things. If they want to do something tomorrow, they can go ahead and do it. But each group is important because we do have an issue with Black Lives Mattering in this country. We do. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So in the midst of that, um, I know many of us have heard about the young lady, Miss Gaines, who was a young black woman who was shot and killed in front of her five-year-old son who was also shot. So what was your reaction and the NAACP's reaction? I did not read, and I usually do read the NAACP reaction, but I was just shocked when I heard about it because they said they cut the media off, and I was at one of those days where I really didn't have that much media contact sometimes in days like that unless someone tells me something. And I was just surprised um, at the outcome and how it occurred, and it was a, another life lost. And I think it really kind of touched home because you're so used to seeing men being the victims, but to see a woman and a young child. When you can arrest all these other people who kill multiple people and they're white males and they get to walk off to jail, but things like this when it's someone black, you tend not to live to tell that story. Yes. So with that being said, what do you think really has to happen for black citizens to trust police officers? There needs to be more of an effort by the police department, such as the creation of civilian review boards around the country. If you notice, New Hanover County is offering a human relations board. That doesn't have the pull or the meat and potatoes as a human relations a civilian review board, which would have subpoena power. It's being pushed by city and county because they don't wish to have a civilian review board. Uh, they wish to give you something that will be a board, but it will have no authority within itself. It will be something to appease the people. It can look into employment issues or something. But there is something with police brutality or excessive force. It really does not have any judicial power or any type of power to do anything. So some of you may not know, but... I know there was a new voting law that was just passed that now allows you not to have identification because there was a big misunderstanding where you were saying that you did have to have it, now they're saying that you don't have to have it. So what really was the NAACP's reaction and your reaction? Because I know a lot was centered around getting that law passed. We were very excited and jubilant. We have three elder female members who were plaintiffs in that case. Yes. Um, I got to see them um, this weekend. So it was proven that the state purposely did these things to negate the vote of blacks, people of color, and people of the lower sector that socioeconomic status. There was a report they did to see who moves a lot, who doesn't have ID. Oh, those people, so we'll write this up against them. So now we do have another seven days of early voting, no need for ID, registration, and voting during early voting, out of precinct voting, all those things have been returned. So we are now fired up, and we've already been registered yes. people to vote. 
And that's what we really want people to understand, how important that we fought for this. And don't let this fight be in vain, because if you don't, you've already lost so much in this state. Yes. You've already lost unemployment benefits, earned income tax credits have been slashed, income taxes have been increased, Medicaid wasn't expanded, and there are other things I'm sure I can't remember to mention, but all of those impact the average person, and not to include HB2. That is true. It's definitely important that we do go out and vote because as we know the big national election is coming up, I'll leave it at that, but your vote does count and it does matter, so utilize it. So, with all this amazing stuff that, in the, that the NAACP does for advocating for rights, how are the ways that people can get involved? Like, is it an age requirement or is it really open to anybody? It is open to anyone, any race, any size, any color. We have a youth council in Wilmington. We have an adult group. We meet every fourth Thursday at St. Stephen AME at 501 Red Cross Street at 7 o'clock, which will be August 25th this month. Right now we're on a voter registration drive and also a faithful voter drive. And what that is is these pledge, oops, pledge cards where you say, I, will, I am a faithful voter, I early vote, or I vote on election day, or I will vote absentee. That's all this card is. So people, I'll be going all around the community and so will others with these cards. We have over almost 50 churches signed up with faith ambassadors. And that's someone who is the eyes of the church that lets them know about the changes that's come on. Make sure everybody in the church is registered, but also votes. Yes. And that takes that out of the onus of the pastor. He doesn't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. He's got someone else to let people know where I need to vote or this and that. And we're trying to get 50 more churches, Wilmington. You heard her. So this means that there's no excuse for you not to be voting. It's too much that's going on that the NAACP is advocating for so our votes are able to count and they will count we just have to actually go out and vote so what are some of the events that the NAACP gets and you know they put on that people can get involved in well we have our primary fundraiser next month which will be our freedom fund banquet in September at the Coastline Center our speaker will be Miss Mary B. McMillan who's the secretary treasurer of North Carolina AFL-CIO we're also going around, if people have events, please let us know. We gladly go out and do voter registration and education and the pledge cards, of course. And so with that being said, we have something every Saturday this month we're going to. And in fact, some Saturdays is two and three events we're going <laughs> to because we're ready to get the word out because it's our time, yes. it's our vote. So all people have to do is contact us. Yeah, then just contact them. Not on them, it's on you. Contact them. Okay, so what would you say to some women and girls who are passionate about advocating for rights? What can be their inspiration to keep doing it? Because I know it's not an easy job. No, it's not easy. But one thing that always helps, like you have, is mentorship. Yes. To have someone to mentor you through that process, because it's not easy doing it by yourself. Even when you're my age, you got a mentor somewhere in that mm -hmm. corner to support you. One, go with some organizations that are familiar with what you're doing or that's something similar to like what you want to do so that you aren't alone, that you have that sisterhood and spirit of sisterhood with those yeah. same women. Um, and don't give up, persevere. I've been involved in this community for a long time before I became the NAACP <laughs> president. It was just I was known after that. so. Don't give up. Keep working for your community because it's worth it because you live in it. Yes. Or whatever your cause may be. That's some great advice. You have to do that. So we've had an amazing interview with Miss Deborah Maxwell, and she has really taught us about how the NAACP is truly advocating and still advocating for the rights of black citizens and all citizens that are around because it's our time and it's our vote. So I want to thank you again for allowing us to come in and for you to speak to us because this is really going to help some girl out there, some young woman, or really anybody who's passionate about advocating for rights. Thank you. Yes. And tell them it favorite. can be done. I was a little knob knee skinny little girl off the <laughs> north side, remember? Some of them will tell you that. So it can be done. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I see it.